Today in Create, I need more blocks to build with. And luckily I can get them if I just expand my building block factory building. And also, it's looking kinda ugly, just like all exposed like that. Which is why today I will be building the building block factory building building. After four takes, I was this close to just hiring somebody else to say that line for me. Last episode, I have not quite finished my building block factory. Nobody called me out in the comments so far, but I completely forgot that I actually wanted the sand to not only get turned into clay balls, but also the sand to get haunted into soul sand and then soul sand get washed into quartz. Well, and you know, uh, the entire not having more than one wall <laughs> is a little bit of an issue, I gotta do admit. And as you can tell, between the videos, I've not quite done any progress on it. I have optimized it quite a bit with some more brass materials, but uh, one thing I did do is I picked out a name for our boy. Check this out, Richard Gennady, building block assembly, or known primarily by his short name, Brick Generator. So obviously we're gonna build the rest of the building today, and hey, look at that, we actually have 100% of more or less everything on here. The vat with clay balls is the only thing not filled to completion, which is exactly why the cobble generator is still generating. So the gist of what we're doing here is we're expanding the operation. We're absolutely gonna be soling and sanding. If this little sand vault that I have does in fact have enough space for another output. And I'm pretty sure that, yep, down here by this hopper, we can totally add another shoot. Okay, we're shooting down. We're gonna get on a conveyor belt and we're gonna haunt that conveyor belt. Or we might want some glass as well, so maybe conveyor belt in it haunting is uh, not really, not exactly the, the perfect idea. In a perfect world, mind you, I would have this here chest, like have another module exactly like this over here, so that would be like the soul sand area, and then another one over here, like, hey, look at that, that's a glass. And, uh, yeah, I don't see why not, honestly. Uh, we have been pretty successful on our production uh, production bit. And it's not like we're running low on building materials. The only problem really here is the distribution. The idea that, like, will we ever make any bricks whilst once we're siphoning the sand out of this? So we need to make sure that everything can get clogged up, at least eventually. As long as producing enough sand and enough, you know, glass will clog up the system, the thing will kind of prevent itself from overflowing. But just in case, I actually do want to create something very vanilla redstone and at the same time entirely modded, so let's go do that. I got these stockpiles, which is more or less on every single vault. So what I want to do is I want to put a separate, not, not on this direction though, a separate redstone link out of every single one feeding into a common array of sorts. This one, for example, is gonna be a uh, cobble clay balls, because this is the one that produces clay balls out of cobblestone. Okay, so this one tracks if the clay ball area is filled, this one tracks if the sand area is filled, and they are both feeding into these redstone torches. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give these redstone torches a common redstone dust line to activate. Once the vault is fully full, this torch will get disabled. So imagine for a moment if the clay balls are also overflowing. That would mean that this torch here is also disabled. And that means that this line is also disabled as well. This is essentially, I'm pretty sure it's either an AND or NAND logical gate. And the logic here is that we're gonna hook up the disabler for the main cobblestone line, for the main cobblestone generator to this NAND system. In short, when all of them are filled, the cobblestone generator is gonna be automatically disabled, saving the server quite a few entities being constantly generated. And listen, I'm not one for like super luck busting, I'm kind of up there, but uh, this is kind of the least I can do after creating just so much luck, oh my god. I'm not gonna lie, this is making me so happy. I don't know why, I, it's just so cool to have a big contraption and have like a control panel for it. Naturally, the only actual control in this panel is that uh, I can turn on and turn off the uh, cobblestone generator remotely, but that is still very freaking cool, right? I will also need like a couple more of these over here, but that's the good spot. It's expandable. Some people are using this technology to make code locks. I'm using this technology to unmake mistakes. 
Also check out what I actually found out. You can color belts. That's so cool. I mean, it's pretty great and it kind of seems useful for when you're trying to actually differentiate and sort and that kind of stuff. But for me, this is completely over overkill because it's already pretty clear what's gonna go where. And it's not even that I'm that good at labeling, mind you. It's just, you know, I'm not making com uh, contraptions that are that complicated. That being said, this is actually a kind of a perfect opportunity to use up all those tunnels I made last episode. These are perfect for evenly splitting material and that just happens that uh, we do need some splitting done because one part is going to go into the smelterator and the other half is gonna go into the hunterator and the best part is that the way this works is that once one of them blocks off the other one is just gonna keep functioning at least according to the multiple outputs available split kind of a distribution. Basically, we're fine with all of these, as long as we don't pick out synchronized outputs. Because that's the one mod where if this, if one conveyor stops, then the other one stops as well. And we kind of want to do opposite of that. Okay, this fan is gonna smelt, this fan is gonna haunt, and will this lava block be a problem? We will find out! Okay, the hunter seems to be haunting, we have the lava cooking, Let's give this a go and see what happens. And yeah, I did make a boiler in the meantime. I don't know, it seems perfectly safe. All right, so this is the simplest part, so I don't actually expect anything to go awry. We're splitting down the middle, we're filling in this glass, we're filling in the soul sand. Or at least I thought so. Now here's the thing. It does say on the fan's ponderation screen that the fan's speed, the speed at which the fans are spinning, doesn't actually affect the speed at which things process using the fans at all. So this is a... Um, <laughs> I only made the fans as fast as I did because I was concerned that we will not reach those three blocks or something like that. And so far so good, we got a stack of glass and we got a stack of soul sand, which will now be splitting into soul sand itself, because you never know when you're gonna need it, a bunch of quartz and a bunch of gold. And a bunch of gold is uh, quite... <laughs> Quite an optimistic prediction, if you ask me. Gold has a 2% chance for a nugget when washed out of the soul sand. It's not gonna be pro a productive gold farm, but it's gonna be more gold than we had before I have installed this. So I have high hopes for this. And here, this is an Omega Brain operation, because check this out. Originally, I wanted to also split this as a kind of a as a kind of a gateway, because we need to wash our soul sand and get the quartz and the gold. But here's the thing, um, we can't do that. <laughs> because the entire situation here is that the entire system here is relying on the product to not enter this gate unless washed. And if we just put the soul sand down here, then the soul sand will just pass through this gate easily pass into it and not get washed at all while inside so we need to block off so we need a filter but if we filter it out then only the quartz is gonna come by while gold is gonna be eventually piling up on this conveyor belt blocking off the entire thing so what are, what are you gonna do well <laughs> i seem to have come up with a solution and if it's gonna work i'm gonna be over the flipping moon check this out we're gonna remove this we're gonna grab a regular vanilla chest, because freaking obviously, have you met me? And we're gonna grab a brass funnel. This brass funnel, we're gonna put uh, down here, and we're gonna, yep, set it to a triangle inwards. This way, we can filter the same conveyor belt into quartz on this side, and into gold on this side. Which I will definitely be doing as soon as I actually get a gold nugget in my inventory. There you go, I don't have the time to wait for this farm to produce any. Okay, a lot of this situation 
is currently hanging on the idea that I'm smart. So let's see if that is such. Uh, this goes here and we're going. There's a bit of glass in this chest and we are filling in this chest with soul sand, which I now realize is kind of a mistake. <laughs> Because this bit here prefers, like, is set to prefer the left part before the pa right part. So, until this chest is absolutely filled with soul sand, this is not gonna even try to process anything else. Okay, I'm gonna manually go in here and uh, eat a couple things onto the conveyor. I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be uh, a little bit more fun for everybody involved. I don't think the rain is helping with any of the washing, mind you. Oh! I did you see it? The first quads! And it is coming in in big patches. Because yes, the, the chance that the quads is being made is actually not a one-to-one -one chance. Check this out. It's 12%, but it's a 12% of producing four at a time. So, you know, it's, um, it's pretty up there. I'm pretty happy with it. If only gold was a little bit faster as well, but I guess it's gonna take a while before we see any nuggets. Oh my god! I, I, wow. I think I managed to do the opposite of jinxing it. That's a first. Okay, okay, final improvement here. I did cave another couple things. So, uh, the middle chest is gold now. That is because we want the gold to actually pile up and I realized that I can do more with quartz. So, here's the thing, right now, if the quartz starts overflowing, like it obviously already is, then the gold will stop coming through either. But we actually do want it to kind of like maybe run in the background, make more gold for us, whatever. Gold is actually really, really useful for mechanizing and for like some of the things, like uh, precision mechanisms, for example, are made with golden shit. So to keep making gold, we need to keep getting rid of quartz, because otherwise this will clog up and it just... That's not, that's not good time for anyone. So obviously I realized we can press quartz into blocks and uh, have a separate storage for quartz placement. That is four times the amount of quartz that we're storing in here. And mind you, yes, uh, blocks of quartz cannot be really made back into regular quartz, not that I remember, except they totally can be, but uh, we're not going to bother with it. It's, it's not worth it, absolutely. If we need some comparators, we can always just go convert some more sand into another quartz, it's fine. But even then, eventually, this chest will start overflowing as well. So, this entire system is gonna get clogged up as well, and again, that's not what we want. So that is why, over here, I have a separate chute leading into a lava chamber, and oh my god, this is gonna pro this probably has already uh, ruined everything down here. No. Okay, cool. Point is, I will need one more of these like, little arches for a depot, and from there, well, I mean, we do need to give this a nicer looking build. And also we do need to finish this one. So, I wanna say let's hit that time lapse. Man, I ran out of uh, light gray terracotta. If only I had some place where I could get more! <laughs> I love using my farms for things they were designed for. Ah, it's the best. I am genuinely impressed with myself here. This build was not gonna come easily. It's an L-shaped building with several levels of layers and several different levels of heights with this silly corner thing and also with a secret property that I am gonna talk about in just a moment. But trust me when I say, this was tough when I say I am happy with this, that is impressive to me even. 
because I did not think that this would hit it at all. I thought that it was just not gonna work. But looking at it now, I am almost teary-eyed because of how pleased with it I am. So why would that be? And the answer is because, well, the, it's the urban design. It genuinely is just the fact that this building now utilizes negative space of all the roads and all of the uh, environment that it's in in a way where you just start actively buying it, that you are in an actual city. Like naturally what helps here a lot is that it is L-shaped and as a result it closes off this little area that we have into its own little box. On this side you got the road, on that side you got this building, on this side you got this building. You look at it and you start feeling, just walking through the street, that you are in fact on a street. I need to like and do a stream here on YouTube and just spend the entire time ironing out like the pathways and the lamp posts and all the things that would make this environment even more city-like. Like, yeah, maybe getting rid of the cow farm, moving it, moving it uh, somewhere else, kind of like, <laughs> might be a good idea. <laughs> Definitely would help with the entire Victorian city environment. But other than that, I am so happy with this. And the best part about this farm is that it's working. Look at that. We are successfully producing enough sand to reach 100%. As soon as it reaches 100%, it drops to like 28 because all of the rest of the sand that, that's not that 28 is going down into this part of the building. And if we walk around, go over here and enter here, we'll see that all this sand is being processed, turned into soil sand, yada, 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 all that done and then compact it and promptly thrown away because we are actually overflowing on quotes at this point. And all in the name of making some more gold, because guess what? Gold is right now kind of the most frustrating thing for me to get for any sort of materials and I'm running surprisingly low on it because that's what the generators are made out of. And that does bring me nicely to this side of the building, which you will notice is uh, hmm, a bit plain, you know? and all that kind of stuff. So the reason why uh, the other walls are very much walls and facades and this one is just like a blank is because on this side of the building, well, this rectangle here that I have zoned out is actually a completely different building. Gliara and I planned it out, planned this corner, uh, literal cornerstone of the community to be here since we started planning the city, since the first day since the second episode and as a result this building just kind of dug into a side of it and it will serve as a kind of basement slash first floor of what actually is gonna be the build and we can really just dedicate the first floor to the control panel because well this build not to spoil it a little bit but still is actually going to be our way of transporting people onto that side of the area. You can note that I have removed the bridge and that is because Liara and I thought about it and agreed that it would make the most sense for us to instead of having a bridge have the pedestrians trans uh, transported more or less over a hanging monorail like in a car of some sort. Now these things aren't even like all of what we can get, by the way. We do have soul sand, which means that we can smelt it and make, into a, make it into scoria or make soul sandstone. There's some extra brick materials and extra brick textures available thanks to that. So I will be trying this out and I will be digging in, into that. Also, we now are making nether quartz, which naturally is, if you don't know, Nether quartz and cobblestone can be made into diorite, and then diorite can be made into andesite, and also it can be all made into um, granite. We have basically infinite supply of granite, andesite, and diorite now. But in the meantime, I have plenty of cobblestone, I have plenty of stuff, and I have plenty of time. I can totally craft it all up manually as I need to. Because that's another thing about this farm, and generally farms that I make, uh, the thing about these like little deposits with chests and whatnot is that once you take out cobblestone out, or like once you take out the product, you, you really can't put it back in. That's the ultimate curse of this island. Point is right now and right here, this is taking shape and it is getting into a really nice place where it's really starting to resemble a city, a town, and I'm really happy with that.